allow me to raise this procedure with a short background. <clears throat> you did tell us here, Mr. Speaker, that the reason the Minister of Education, the substantive minister approved by this parliament, cannot attend the parliament is because of COVID. That's what you told us, Mr. Speaker. I was wondering if the minister who has no time for parliament can have time for schools. So the procedure issue I am raising is whether this parliament must not interest in itself in what is taking place at the Ministry of Education. These ministers, you are roasting one after another. First, my friend Ogwang brought a statement, chest. Second, Jesse Muyingo brings a statement, chest. Now you are about to chase the Honorable Kaduchu. They take uh, more than three weeks without meeting the minister. They can come here and pretend. Three weeks. Sometimes a whole month. That's why they keep bringing the same statements, just changing their signatures and dates. Because the, the, the one running, the ministry is not accessible, and you said here, COVID. Related to that uh, issue of procedure, Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Education here in the last parliament brought a report here of the President Yoweru Museveni Kaguta Tibuhaburua running a school in Kanyareru where he pays 700,000 per child in that school, but he also pays 10,000 for a full year for a child in UPE school. So if you want sanctions taken against the exorbitant charge of school fees, even before you go for Muyingo, we start with Mr. Seven, who runs a school where he pays personally 700,000 per child in Kanyareru, and then he pays 10,000 per child in UPE. Then we can deal with the other. That's why they can't take sanctions, because they are they themselves violating the... MP for Nyabshaw's order. The right Honorable Speaker, this is a house of record. I, Kanyadiru is a sub-county in Nyabshaw's constituency, a constituency that, that I proudly represent here. I want to state on record that President Yoel Kaguta Museveni, whom he calls Mr. Museveni, does not have own or have a school where he pays school fees as he states. What exists, however, in Kanyarieru is a primary school and a secondary school like, like they exist in any other sub-count of the Republic of Uganda. Even in Chira municipality, where honorable member of parliament standing here to speak, there are primary schools and secondary schools in Chira, where government of the Republic of Uganda, headed by His Excellency Uwe Kaguta Museveni, pays capitation grant and government aid. That is the position as it is. Is he in order, right honorable speaker, to mislead this august house that the president owns a school and pays school fees? Mr. Chairman, you wanted it add on before I can. Your Chairman, Education Committee. Yeah, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. I came in uh, the Parliament of Uganda, the 10th Parliament, and right from the time we resumed Parliament in 2016, I was on the Committee of Education. In 2018, I was the Vice Chair. I don't remember any moment when the Committee of Education brought a report relating to what Honourable Samuel was saying. Would you bring the evidence in the on the on the website laid on table? So, uh, to, uh, yes, uh, so uh, I need your protection right now to speak so that I conclude. Please, uh, it's you on the microphone. Yes, thank you okay. very much. Okay. Thank you very much. So, I, the, the, this Parliament of Uganda is a Parliament that bases itself on evidence. So, I would request through you right now, Speaker, Honorable Semu, Semuju, my best friend to bring evidence of what he's talking about. In my view, what he's telling us is not well substantiated. Thank you. Now, 
Honorable colleagues, Honorable Minister, I wanted to say something. Mr. Speaker, this morning, the whole top management of the Ministry of Education and Sports were together with the Minister of Education. Please we are together with please. the Ministry please. of Education, regardless of where, at Nakasero. We were together with the team from UNEP, having meetings, looking at the all-level results, which is to be released tomorrow. And before that, I personally had face-to-face -face extensive meeting with the Minister of Education and Sports, who is also the First Lady. We discussed on this matter of the curriculum transition. We discussed on this matter of school fees before I came on this floor of Parliament, Mr. Speaker. We must put the records clear. Is my colleague, Honorable Ibrahim, in order really to stand on this floor and to say that the ministers of state in education do not have time to even meet the minister after three weeks, what? Is he really in order when I've just been with the minister on Thank record you. before Thank you. coming here? Thank, Thank you. you. Now, on, on our minister, you might find Honorable Semuja has tried to access the first lady and has failed. And therefore, he thinks it's difficult for everyone. Huh? Huh? But anyway, uh, you've given that information to him that you've met the minister and you've been meeting. I remember when I was in cabinet, the first lady was attending cabinet, and I just wanted to clarify this, that uh, the issue, Honorable Samuel, is the way I brought it here. I told the House that the COVID restrictions on, around the first lady and the president, by virtue of her being a wife of the president, required that we, co we continue doing COVID tests all the time. Listen, which was not sustainable on our side. So for convenience purposes, I have seen many ministries here where I have never seen a, ministry, a cabinet minister here, but they are moving. So that's why we as presiding officers decided when she sought our guidance, we guided her and said, no, you don't need to be here. When we need you, we shall inform you. Okay? So that's, that's you, you, you ask me, Okay? You, you don't direct. <laughs> okay? Uh, number two, n number two, number two, on the issue raised by Honorable Kashwinji on point of order, you know, when you become specific, when you become very specific, then you find we, as a house, we can demand that indeed you table. So I will request Honorable Semuju, because now Honorable Semuju might be right or he might be wrong. Okay? So I must give him a chance to prove what he has arranged. Mr. Honorable Speaker, Honorable yeah. I am very happy for you to give me the chance. You see, I graduated the same day with Honorable Janet Kata. Even her classrooms were being conducted in the State House as a student. So when I, these things, we, we know what you're talking about. Mr. Speaker, I am going to bring here a report, a report of the Committee of Parliament that was complaining the president ran the school where he pays school fees, 700,000. I am going to bring that report. I also bring the answer to the day we debated that report. I don't want to rely, an MP, you shut up and say, I don't remember, and then you are giving evidence. Then how would we trust you? So I want to thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I am going to bring that report here. On our... No, no, I, 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 I'll bring it, Mr. Speaker, maybe Tuesday, because I need to go and retrieve the report and the, and the answer itself. But also, but also, even as I make that pray, if you ordered the technical people here in Parliament to go and bring you that answer, because this much happened here. Yeah. No, on, 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 uh, on, yeah, the Honourable Kanye remembers. Please, Honourable Kanye, please, first wait. 
No, first wait, please, first wait. What, what, what I'm asking for is not verbal statements. What I'm asking for is what should be tabled here. So when I was saying you, I'm giving you tomorrow, so tomorrow too, I'll give you a chance. Because you said it's a report of parliament, it's a answer. That's very clear, please. If you request for it, give it to him to, uh, but even this evening. It's very simple. Mr. Speaker, I, have, I don't want to complain, but I have seen you here giving ministers weeks. D don't mind, we, sh we shall help you to even... Can you, can you remind me the data? I go and bring it now. Honorable, can you please? please. I will just need a report from one of the and then tomorrow I'll be able to rule because I couldn't rule when a member can say I can bring the information here. So tomorrow we, we, we shall work on that and, we, and our office will cooperate with you in case you need information, any information from the clerk. Okay? So honorable colleagues, allow me, I guide on this one of school fees, please. Allow me, I guide on the one of school fees. The one of the school fees, uh, we are going to minister, please appear before the committee and give them the measures you have taken. And you can even seek the guidance of the Attorney General. The measures you have taken against schools, or the measures you can take against schools that have failed to adhere to your guidelines. Okay? And then we shall have to debate that matter. So the debate today is on uh, 3.1 and other issues to do with the education sector that I had allowed. I may allow Bo Rola, can you First, followed by Honorable Gyaru Gabari. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm back again to ask about the report on special needs education, and also to say that after the PLA results, we are having challenges as members of parliament who represent people with disabilities. We do not know what the government is implementing. Is the government implementing inclusive education to private schools for the purpose of ensuring that they pass and continue with the education? Therefore, I will propose that the Honor Minister brings a report here with all the challenges associated so that we can be able to achieve compulsory education for all. To right on our speaker, as Madisab region, we have a big problem about a Melo Technical Institute. Over 10 years, government has failed to finish the construction of this institute. Right on our speaker and colleagues, I have been to the ministry, I have written several letters no action has been taken. Can the ministry go to Ajumani and we have stakeholders meeting to resolve on this matter, right on our speaker, immediately? Lastly, right on our speaker, there is... Thank you, Honorable Mr. John. ...that the two statements be presented and uh, debate ensues. I had hoped that uh, item 3.2 would be presented as captured on the other paper. And for emphasis, the item is the measures against errant schools that charge exorbitant fees in clear violation of the directives issued by the government. And that is what I'd expected the minister to present here. These directives, we are aware, and they have been issued since 2020, as she has alluded here. The report we wanted was to tell us that the Honorable so-and-so who owns this school charging very exorbitant uh, uh, school fees has been sanctioned as such. That the Honorable Dr. Joyce Boruchu who owns this school and is the minister in the education sector has been sanctioned this way. So, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to move that item 3.2, which has not been adequately answered, be stood over and the minister be sent back and the debate only concentrates on item 3.1 because what has been presented here is not actually what we required on the other paper, Mr. Speaker. 
Thank you. Let me first pick around two procedures, two more procedures, then I give, if it's in relation to what Honorable Jonathan Odur has raised. Is it connected to what Honorable Jonathan Odur has raised? Because I cannot have procedure on procedure, okay? So I want to know if it's related so that I answer at once, I guide at once. Honorable Sir. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, the voices of the poor people can only be heard in this parliament and through members of parliament. And when we delay to tackle some of these issues, then that to me is an injustice. And the people continue to suffer. I raised this motion over two years ago. But as you can see, the problem is actually becoming worse to an extent that, right honorable speaker, you can even see nursery schools charging four million shillings for a nursery kid. Four million shillings. And right honorable speaker, I want to completely concur with the honorable Jonathan, uh, I mean, uh, honorable Dur, that let us focus on the issue of the curriculum and then allow the committee and us to go and discuss so that we can have a report presented to this house and then we can discuss in detail. Right Honorable Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, I even have another motion that has been on the order paper and off regarding the early childhood education policy. There is a policy in place that is not being implemented. We have left the nursery education to the private sector. And yet we have a policy where that obligates, brought by government, by the passed by government, where this early childhood education should be incorporated into the primary schools. So, right honorable speaker, I want to agree that let's focus on the curriculum and then we are going to handle this matter. Hopefully next week we have a whole session to discuss this issue regarding the education sector in this country. So right honorable speaker, that is my pro that's the procedure issue. This would be the second time if we are to turn away this report as presented. It will be the second time we are sending the minister the third time, Mr. Speaker, that we shall be standing over this report because it is inconclusive. Right, Honorable Speaker, would it be procedural, okay, if we continue, if this House continue to send away the Minister and demand for a better report without indicting or reprimanding the same Minister, wouldn't we be breeding impunity. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, wouldn't it be procedurally okay if you would allow me to move a motion without a notice that this House moves to reprimand the Ministry of Education over its failure to bring a report that would enable this House to tackle a matter that is so pertinent to the education of our children. Mr. Speaker, wouldn't it be procedural okay if you would give me that opportunity, sir? I beg to, to move. Thank you. And they say, we are now, these things are not done quickly, we are now doing them, but money is not in the budget. Maybe you are doing them in your sitting room. But also, Mr. Speaker, most important, the, the, the point that the my neighbor here has made. None of us is contesting that the new curriculum is good. We are only saying prepare for it. I'll give you an example. I have a daughter. She leaves one secondary school to go to another. Then they say your continuous assessment results are not here, so we can't give you a report. Another friend of mine, they say, no, no, we can't take your child because they those progressive things remained where you are, so you stay there. 
we are only questioning the preparation. Maybe it is not painful, you may not have children. So that, that's, that's the, the, the point that uh, my colleague was saying. You have provided no money in the budget, you are saying you are developing a curriculum. Where the, a colleague has said they went to people whose duty is it to develop it, they have not even started on it. Our children are registering to sit in year four. And then finally... Thank you. Thank you. Now, honorable colleagues, be because you have brought a curriculum, and now, for a level, you are telling these students to apply for combinations based on the curriculum which you have faced out. So, is this curriculum stopping at all level? If not, how have you prepared for this transition to a level? Honorable Minister, no, honorable colleagues, I don't, on matters of, uh, of national... <coughs> national Idinga Parliament, Nibana Uganda was single wound Chevaina. Government was supplemented to argue a billion in the Sato, Okugure Yuma, Okua Lavan to Okubaso Mesa, Bubagan Okola, Identicard and Pia, Zoga men Zetu Gamandi, Zilimwe Yokuari in the Wind Yoksinga Kuzino. A Chizibu. Government here, New Angiogana, we saw as no Gana Kuganda Road, Basha Fulmia ID, Zavana and Gavi, Baba de ID, Omuz to Gunawera. A young Jenina, national ID and Ojola, Eguaco, Mkumi Bidi, a very muenda. Catch you to Wuzan to one nafe. ID is it a guaco, Atina Zomogana Kuzichusa, Atina Mogana Kuzusa, Duacha at Mucha Fulmia ID and Pia. Muxoka, why no Zibu walks as Suzavan. Kadimins are going to have an ID to Mugana Kusasura. And you could have an Avagal Zifana Mwangu, we were Joke Sasura. Twina Yokuronda, Okugendo Kosa, I Dizin, about Zivawayo, Kuala Virako. A bank government to Ria Twaria Miake Vidi, Oksovokola ID is a Twina Kat. Katyokona to Chawaza Miake Vidi. So Kutiakwa Man, in the Omulumo government, go here to me, go Kujo identical is what the Zuka, and Mujo Kongerako Wong is our travel. Gwabika Gujinze, it had to just be a Kusanga with Zibuka. Nitwe was an Okwebuza when better and Nimuna Uganda, Nanina, I did again Nimuna Uganda. Bongamanti, what do you say that you must tell him when Uganda? Mbam Fusechi to us, I could be dumb, Nick, never cut to the Kobotezima so Korachi not did it. The questions that are in Parliament today. First, we passed a supplementary budget of 300 billion shillings to facilitate what they have called mass enrollment and renew of identity card. In this exercise, they claim they are going to renew 15 million IDs and then issue about 17 new ones. I have an ID that is expiring 2029. That's why I asked the government to tell me. Are all the IDs going to expire? And why are they expiring? Can my citizenship expire? But two, the same government is, even as I speak to you today, they are still issuing new IDs. I have two sons who have just gotten their ID from Uganda Road. Just last, last month they got IDs, which means their ID should expire in, in 2034. But they are going to embark on an exercise that is going to render all these IDs useless. So we are asking them, first of all, do you have time to do it? Second, why are you doing it? We are thinking the only country that wants to keep renewing IDs. The other day, they, they issued us with the passports and then said, we are now going to dig it. Ones. These ones have expired. And we, we had to spend money, almost half a million to go and... So here, yeah, it's, it's total confusion. And I am not sure that at their speed, because the last time they issued these IDs took them two years. Whether at their speed they will be able to issue IDs that will be used for the next general elections. Well, Kakatu, we, we, have, we have timelines and we have concerns about timelines within which an expiry of the national ID takes place and then within which when somebody is going to have another national ID. And if at all there, there, there is, uh, it is long time, 
between the expiry and the acquisition of another national ID, it is going to create a lot of problems in the travel, in legal transaction, and in everything that requires a national ID. So we are cautioning the minister to be cautious about the time for procurement, the time for appropriation, the time for start of the process. We wouldn't like to have a midway trouble when machines break down, when people cannot be paid, go on strike, and all those roadblocks that can impede the smooth running of the process. So we, have, uh, we, we, we want the minister to be ready so that we don't get legal problems and transaction bottlenecks. Yes. Kati Chetugamba, nti echo kujawo en simbi sichibi, kujake zari niyo. Tula vanti no chitufu. Kwa abatu waba singe ilo uvunjwa. No kufuno ufunye sente zoku rinio inga national ID, chiva kalu vizi. Na ye, echi sinzo vukulu, kwekubeda nti, tugenda kutuka echi sera, anga national ID ye wedeko, ili expired. Tubele na echi sera, anga teko kubeda ni national ID, empia. Kakari wetu nabira ni bange dene, wakati wa national ID ye wedeko, na empia, diru ono jifuna. Oja kufunu uvuziu, singa onoba ya ueta aga okutravelinga, Weta gogoli ya ukufuna visa, weta goku okugula u account, weta goku tunde taka. Oba transactions hizo na zone zeta ga national ID. Mutisele chubwa nabwa nga tojirina. Uja kufuna uvuzibu. Katino nga cheta ga minister okubeda ready. Ne government yonu okubeda ready. Okulaba nga expire ya, ya national ID. Tetu wala vude vunji. Mutu wana afuni ya national ID mpia. Kubanga buwatu nabe ilanga ziri expired nga tetuina national ID mpia. Abantu waja kuwa tepaso wa kutambula. Abantu waja kuwa nga tepaso wa kuprocessing passport siza abwe. Abantu waja kuwa nga tepaso wa kutransactinga kutaka. Tepaja kuwa nga tepaso wa kugula wo uh, accounts mbank. Nebi nituwe bie ngedie. Kalinu tuwa gala babele serious. Babele swift. Babele nga baso wala okole miri mjino mbwa. Mauli ishu jole isi ya manere enda. Yes. 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 Nga bantu bababambi vewe la na inga vewe la ku national ID nga keka kalu kaa wade kati huyo ajia kubi ilanga taso wa kufuna national ID ila process ajia kumule ayu wanabi ilanga esente ze yewe la taso wade kuzisa suwa ajia kufuna national ID kati huyo chite geza ni government iteko kuteka huo measure ze gambe bana femwe abawo la bantu center ni abala gilo kutuwa la national ID za bajia kufirwa Ira e, tuja kuba touch mu mugundi zawe, mu, mu licenses zawe. Ubaba ina nubu yinza, okuwa laba antu sente nga kakalu national ID chayoka. Kalinu noruwecho, walu waba gendo kufilo. Oba, abantu wabata genda kufuna national ID mpia, uloku vila nti national ID za vazibo wa, uloku vila nga atipa sobo de kusasura mabaji. Ensonga ya ndaga muntu, siya wana waki sobo ka, oba siya feba MP zioka. Ene ensonga ya wana Uganda wana. Ne minister ebintu ebimbye twamusaba tasobodde kubyanukula era kye kyolacho olaba anti parliament emusabye atera no range yako bewo abeko kyategeze gwanga ne kye kisera nge gwanga lino tubenga tulowoza ku nsonga eyo kubanga dalala tubera ne national identity cards nga siza buli myaka 10 ntyo jitwala no bango jibanga ojizo obujja kye bayita renew omu 4040 minister wa fetu musabye afuna akadde Agende atunulile kumawangaga East Africa, omuli Rwanda, omuli Kenya. Atata ambuleko nebusuka East Africa. Agende ko mu Southern Africa. Atunulile nyeguanga nga South Africa. Atunulile nyeguanga nga Botswana. Zijia zitia gaga mawanga gamu getumu wade. Nga guga sobo lukola national identity cards. Nga za miaka na miaka nti omuntu waweze miaka kumi na munana. Asobu lukola ni national identity card. Atenga ajikoze sebi nitu binji. Nga watuka ku airport ya yete ramu. Na ingile guangalie. Nga watambula na agende. Walanga kule nitu binji. So, chechisera. 
era tusubira nti kati national identity cards zibaddamu okufulumya zija kubanga te zidda mate ne batugamba ate mutwale naye mu byonna tutunuli densonga nga ate banna Uganda te bagenda basa ba sente kubanga abali mu nsonga ya ndaga muntu nga ate bo bebate kawe miyaka jine 10 tuongede tumusabe nti sebo ngoleta ensonga national identity card ate otugambo chanti obiliko ngate tumanyi bulunji nti finance ate ngate era tugambye nti finance tena mu asente ebintu ngebyo ngafu otubaddengo ano ngatogera ku nsonga zengudo ne batugamba local governments zonna te bazi wadde sente buli chimu chonna te chirina sente ne gwato dzewa no tugambye oli mukuteeka teeko kubanga national identity card so zizo obujja nate no tujukiza na account finance tena ku asente twagadde cabinet ekomewo rencha ngeteleze ze bintu ebirange na answer ku buli chimu We, we, we've really, as I asked this issue, we've not been very satisfied with all the answers that have been provided by the minister over the matter of renewal of national identity cards in the country. We are grateful that the minister has acknowledged that he still has to give certain responses and he has asked for some time. So we await him tomorrow to see that whatever is needed to be responded to fully, he does it, but more so, in part of his responses, we don't expect him to continue telling us that we need every 10 years as Ugandans to, to renew our IDs. We've told him to borrow a leaf, to, to borrow, to borrow a leaf from the neighborhoods. We have Rwanda, we have Kenya, even when you go to South Africa to Botswana, they don't renew national IDs. As long as someone makes 18 years, one is able to have a constant and a continuous ID. We expect that. But to make matters worse, we are worried a little. If you tell us you've already commenced on the renewal process and you have 300 billion in place, but you tell us the money is still in process, you are waiting for finance to release the funds, that one I worry so much Ugandans. And continuously they have told us that money is not there. Even local governments did get money for handling roads and the like. So we are a little worried. But we await his responses upon the different questions we've put before him concerning the mass renewal of national IDs. Even the fact that some people have just got their cards. They have just registered. Other cards expire in 2030. Is that person also expected to renew his or ID? Thank you.